guys and welcome to my crochet basket series. Today we are on pattern number four, the little handle basket. If you've missed out on the previous patterns, we started off with the boxy basket, then on to the basic basket, and then the flat bottom basket. Those were all made with Bernat Maker and we are finally moving on to Wool Ease Thick and Quick. So here is the an example of the tray size in the little handle basket. I made this years and years ago. They have these cute little handles. I'll put a photo up showing all the different sizes. There's a size mini, medium, and then the tray right here. So this is Lion Brand Willie's Thick and Quick. This color is gray marble. And we use two strands held together of the Woolies Thick and Quick. This is a size six super bulky yarn. This is the color Fossil. The, um, they're typically 80% 80 80 acrylic and 20% wool. That changes slightly depending on the colorway. So holding two strands together of this can be a little tough on your hands but you really need the two strands to make these baskets nice and sturdy. I have seen some people um, use one strand only and it works okay, but your basket is not gonna be any near as structured and sturdy as it is with the two strands. So the trick to these baskets being really sturdy is using the two strands of super bulky yarn with a small, tight stitch. So we use the L eight millimeter crochet hook, which is kind of small for the two strands, but we really, really need that to create the sturdy basket. So I don't recommend moving away from that. If you're not used to working with really thick yarn, it takes a little while. Your hands might be sore, but you will get used to it. I've been doing it for years now and I have no issues at all. Um, so two strands of the woolly thick and quick held together. I have tried the two strands of Lazy Day, the cover stories Lazy Days Thick and Quick by Lion Brand. It is also a number six super bulky yarn. It's a tube style yarn. So it has that woven knitted like fabric on the outside and then it's filled on the inside with polyester. Um, it worked out okay. I'm gonna show you a basket, or not a basket, the tray that I worked up. I haven't woven the ends in yet, and it worked out pretty good. I will say, before I started the sides, the bottom was a little bit wavy, whereas I don't really get a lot of wave when I use the Woolies Thick and Quick, so I thought, I didn't think it was gonna work out very well but once I finished it, it actually turned out pretty good. So that's definitely an alternative. And you can experiment with other yarns as well. Um, any size six super bulky that you wanna hold together, I'm sure will work fine. So you'll need the L eight millimeter crochet hook, a tapestry needle to weave your ends in, a pair of scissors. These are the cute little tags that I put on the corner of my baskets and it's just a little leather tag and these are called Chicago screws and you just screw them right on. I like to use a little mini screwdriver but you can also use your hand. I'll have these linked below. I use a few different suppliers for these. They'll be in the full blog post which is linked below and then I highly recommend checking your gauge on this pattern to make sure that you're crocheting tight enough to where your basket will be sturdy. You really want to use the flexible measuring tape to check it. I give several measurements throughout the pattern and then you can see if you're online to making your basket as sturdy as mine. So we're gonna start with the size mini basket using the color Fossil. I'm gonna get everything set up and I will meet you back here in a minute. Okay, so we're starting with the size small. We have our two strands held together. With the Woolies Thick and Quick, you can definitely pull through or pull from the center and the outside to get your two strands, which works fine for the small basket. But for the bigger baskets, 
Um, you probably need more than one skein, so just um, use two skeins and pull um, one strand from each skein to do that. So I do notice on the Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick, some colors seem a little bit thicker, like the tweeds definitely seem a little bit thicker. This one's fossil and I would say this one's, sometimes it's on the thinner size and sometimes it seems a lot thicker. This one that I'm working with today seems right about in the middle. It's not too thick, but it's not too thin. So your gauge might always be slightly off, but as long as you're within about a quarter to a half an inch, I think you'll be fine. So we start on the base of these baskets working in the round. So we leave a long tail to weave in later, take the tail, wrap it around twice, insert your hook under all loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, and chain one. That creates our magic circle or magic ring. And then we are going to create 10 half double crochet in the ring. So for a half double crochet, we yarn over, insert our hook into the circle, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Like I said, you want to maintain a tight tension. Okay, so each of the rounds is going to be joined to the beginning half double crochet on this base. So the beginning chains do not count as a stitch. You want to skip over that and always work into that first half double crochet or half or single crochet when we get to the sides. So you want to work under both loops, which is right here. So this would be the front loops only. And again, we have two strands held together, so there's gonna be two loops. If you only had one strand, there'd only be one loop. So that would be the front. This would be the back loops. And then we're working under both loops. So you wanna get all under all of them, like right there. Okay. So I like to pull my working yard, working yarn, so that it's a little bit tight on my hook. Insert your hook and then create a slip stitch to join. There you have the first round. And then take your tail ends and tighten the circle until it's closed. Okay, there you have it. Okay, so round two we are going to work two half double crochet in each stitch around. So we are going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And then we're gonna work in that same stitch that we chain one out of and that we just joined to. Make sure you do not skip over this as your first stitch because then your stitch count will be off. So chain one, half double crochet, and then one more half double crochet in that same stitch. Okay, and then it's two half double crochet in the next. So again, it's yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all loops. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through three. Okay, and then we just repeat that all the way around for a total of 20 stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete this round 
just doing the two stitches, two half double crochet in each stitch around. And I'll meet you back here when we join. Okay, I finished round two. I went ahead and weaved my tail end in just to get it out of the way. You can just weave it nice and tight around that center and it stays really well. Okay, so we're going to complete round three now. So round two, we're gonna join with a slip stitch. Again, pull the tail a little bit tighter on the hook. Find that first half double crochet and join the round with a slip stitch. So the reason I like to pull the working yarn a little bit tight before I do the slip stitch is because it creates the seam. And I like to get this loop right here and right here as small as I can so the seam is a little bit less visible. Okay, so round three, we're going to chain one. We're gonna half double crochet in the first stitch, two half double crochet in the second stitch, and then repeat that around. So again, we chain one, it doesn't count as a stitch. We wanna work our first stitch right here under that first stitch. Do not skip over it, it's very easy to skip over, it's hard to see, but make sure it goes into that very first stitch. Okay, so half double crochet. Oops. And then two in the next, two half double crochet in the next stitch. Okay, one half double crochet in the next stitch. And then two half double crochet in the next stitch. Okay, let's do that one more time. So yarn over, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through three loops. So that was one and we do two in the next stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through three. Okay, so we're gonna repeat that all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. Okay, so round three is complete. We can go ahead and measure just to double check our gauge. We should have about five inches across, which I do. So we're good on that. Okay, so this was the final round of the base. And I like to work the first round of the sides in the back loop only. So in order to get a more seamless join, we're gonna do what's called the no cut join method. It might be known by some other names, maybe just an invisible join method, but that's how I learned it. So I call it the no cut join method. So you find the first half double crochet of the round that you just completed, and you wanna work under both loops. So this loop over here, make it a little larger. You insert your hook, from the back to the front under both loops. Then you put the loop on the hook and pull it through to the back. And then the loop right here that it creates, you kind of pull and make sure it's about the same size as these other loops. So I'm gonna tighten this a little bit. And once you have it adjusted to about the same size, you just chain one, and then we're gonna start that first round of the sides. So the first round is under the back loop only. So this is the back loop. Okay. This right here would be the front loop. And we just single crochet into those back loops only. So don't forget that very first stitch. So you insert your hook under the back loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And you just repeat one single crochet 
all the way around. So it'll start creating a nice side the further you go. And see that little ridge? That makes it sit nice and flat on a surface. If you want, you can work in both loops and that creates a more rounded look. I'm gonna show you what that looks like on the next side, just so you can see the difference. If you are working under both loops, you don't have to do that invisible join method. Just join with a traditional single crochet, or sorry, slip stitch, and then start the single crochet in both loops around. Okay, so I'm gonna finish working all the single crochet in the back loops only all the way around. And then I'll meet you back here and show you how we start the next round. Okay, so we just completed the first round of the side under the back loop only, and now we're going to join. So be careful not to work in that extra loop right here. That's where we created that no cut join method. This is not a stitch this is the join so you skip over that and it just creates like a faux stitch that helps um, hide that seam a little bit okay so we found the find the first single crochet we go under both loops and then again tighten a little on your hook and then join with a slip stitch so you can see the join right there so this right here is the kind of that faux loop we created by doing that spe special join method. And you can see it's just kind of like an even transition and you don't really see the seam much. Okay, so as you can see, the basket's not completely curling up yet. It might even be curling out. Make sure as you work, the work that is facing you as you work is on the is facing the outside of your basket. If it starts curling in like this and the work that's facing you while you work is facing the inside, you have the basket inside out. So you need to make sure you flip it to where the right side is facing out. You know it's the right side because that's what's facing you as you work. You'll see the little ridge, this should be on the outside. If you don't see that ridge, if you see it kind of look big and clunky like that, that means it's inside out. So that's one of the biggest um, common mistakes I see or people write me about saying their baskets look funny, it's because they're inside out. If you kept working the entire basket with the inside out, it still will turn out, you just need to flip it at the very end, um, right side out. Okay, so the next three rounds are exactly the same. We chain one, and then we work a single crochet under both loops. So again, don't skip over that very first stitch. Insert your hook under both loops and create a single crochet. So insert your hook, Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn, let me start that one again. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, just complete that all the way around. You should be getting 30 stitches at the end of each round. Make sure you're working pretty tightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the next three rounds exactly the same, join each of them with a slip stitch, and then I'll meet you back here and we will start the little handles. Okay, so I just finished that last round of single crochet. You can see how sturdy the basket is. You should have a nice round shape that has minimal waving. If it's really wavy, and loose you need to crochet tighter if you're having trouble crocheting tighter you could try going down a hook size um, but it might be hard to get the yarn to stay on a smaller hook um, so it will just take a little bit of practice okay so again tighten 
that working yarn a little bit on your hook and join with a slip stitch to that beginning single crochet. I forgot to mention, you can see that slight seam right there. I forgot to mention that if you have my original basket pattern, the original one, I worked in a continuous round without joining, but I switched it to joining at the end of each round just because I thought it gave it a better shape and let it sit a little nicer. When you go in a continuous round, the next round is always up a little bit higher and a little bit higher. And I just felt like it wasn't looking as nice and neat and sitting as flat and even on the one side as I wanted it to. So um, now that I'm updating the pattern, I switched it to that way. So if you have the original pattern, feel free to continue to work in that continuous round, but I think you might like this better and the seam is very slight. Again, if you pull that yarn tight on your hook before you do that joining slip stitch, it creates this tiny little bump and it makes it pretty hard to see. And I honestly, on certain things like baskets, planters, things where the seam is probably not gonna be facing anyone, I don't mind the seam. So that's what I'm going with. Okay, so if you wanted to make your basket taller, you can continue as many rounds of single crochet as you want before starting that handle. So for the handle, we are going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I do that um, not too tight, but not loose, a pretty even tension. You don't want it too loose or it'll be kind of flopping around on your basket. Okay, so then we're going to skip six stitches. Count that first stitch, the one that you just chained out of, and the joining stitch. Count that as your first skipped stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in that seventh stitch, you want to single crochet. Okay, and it says nine single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating a handle on one side, crocheting around, creating a handle on the other side, and then finishing the other side up. So we want to make sure the handles are evenly distribu distributed on each side. So each handle is six stitches, and then each side is nine stitches for a total of 30 stitches. Okay, so we did the nine single crochet. Now we're gonna do six more um, chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we skip over six stitches. So this stitch right here we already worked into, so that's not counted. So go right to that next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then nine single crochet you should have left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you know you did that round correctly if you end your last single crochet in the very last stitch of the round, which we did. So this round, it's fine if it's looking kind of wonky like this and the handles are a little tight and pushing in. When we do that last round, it will even out. So this is what it kind of should be looking like. Okay, 
So this round, we do not join. We are going to single crochet in the chain space of the handle. So a chain space is the space created under a chain. So you'd go all the way around. Normally you'd work into the stitch and you'd put your hook, you know, under the loops of the stitch and crochet into that. We're working around the, the chain space. So we go under the entire handle space. So what that looks like is you insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. You want to make sure you hold your yarn nice and tight and even for this. You want it to look as nice as possible. We are gonna do seven stitches across. So that was one, two, and you can kind of adjust and align the stitches as you go. Three, four, five, six, and then seven. I usually add that extra stitch, even though we only did seven chains, just because I usually have a little bit of extra space. If you don't have extra space there, feel free to just do seven stitches, or sorry, six stitches. And if you have more space, because you worked really tight, you can even add an eighth stitch. But you want it to be nice and tight and even looking like that. Okay, now along the nine single crochet, we're going to work a slip stitch. So insert your hook, pull up a loop. I like to work these a little bit loosely. So I pull my loop up to about the height as the loop that's already on my hook. And then you pull through that loop on your hook. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through the loop on your hook. If you go too tightly, your basket's gonna kind of pucker in. If your basket's a little bit looser than you like, you can work tighter and it will help um, tighten and structure up those sides a little bit. So that was two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I miscounted. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I did nine. Don't forget, I think I forgot to count this one. So we did nine slip stitch. Let me try that last one again. Sometimes it's a little finicky working with these two strands. Okay, so now we're gonna do seven single crochet into that chain space for the handle on the opposite side. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, just make sure it's nice and neat. If it looks a little too lumpy or bumpy or uneven, just take some of those stitches out and give it another try. Okay, and then nine more slip stitch across this last edge. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. And then we're going to leave a long tail and fasten off just long enough to weave your ends in. Okay, so make sure you end on that last stitch of the round. Pull your tail through and then this is how I finish mine off. So I insert it from the front to the back and under the loops of that um, first single crochet of the handle And see there, you just have like that little tiny seam area that hardly shows and it finishes it off nice and neat. And then just weave under gently. Don't pull it too tight, just pull it enough to where it kind of mimics the size of the other loops. And then just continue weaving the ends in until they're nice and secure and then you can shape the basket if it's kind of like smushed and misshapen I just take my hands and really give it a good shape sometimes what I like to do is take a little bowl like I have those little glass pyrex bowls those clear glass pyrex bowls and the smaller size fits perfectly in there and I just put it down in there and it helps give a really nice shape and I form it around there and let it sit a few minutes. I kind of adjust the ends of the handle if they're kind of like curling in weird. And there you have it. They're really nice and sturdy. and cute. So here's the seam. It's not very visible and it's on the side of the handle. So then I take the little leather logo tag. I go on the side of my handle here, just find an opening and screw it in place. So that is the size mini. So I'm gonna get up, um, set up for the size medium. The size medium is the same as the first three rounds of the size small. So we're gonna start on round four. So I will get set up and meet you back here in just a minute. Okay, so I have my medium set up, but I wanted to tell you what I was talking about um, when I mentioned those Pyrex bowls in the last clip. So I went ahead and finished weaving the end in and I had to turn it inside out. So now it's kind of misshapen again. So if you put the Pyrex bowl in and then give it a nice shape around the bowl, make it nice and even. like that, and then just let it sit there for a few minutes. When you pull it out, it's the perfect little bowl. So I'll go ahead and set that aside. This is the size I use for um, the size medium. Anyway, so size medium. The first three rounds are exactly the same as the mini size, and we just do one more round for a total of 40 stitches. So all of these have a basic increase of 10 stitches per round. So you can create your basket any size you want. The tray size is 70 total stitches. If you have my original pattern, I did each round at only nine. Um, so the last round, the seventh round was only 63 stitches, but I thought it's a lot easier if I do each basket um, starting with 
10 stitches and just build on that because then you can easily make it any size you want. So the new tray is gonna be 70 stitches total. Okay, so I joined that round with a slip stitch and we are going to chain one and we're gonna work two half double crochet in the first two stitches and then two half double crochet in the third stitch. So there's one in the first, one in the second, and then two half double crochet in that third stitch. This color is the color wheat and it sheds a little bit, but it's a really pretty color. Okay, so yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through three loops. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. And then two half double crochet in the next stitch. So let's do that one more time. So one half double crochet in the next, one half double crochet in the next, and then two half double crochet in the next. So I think I've mentioned before, but if you need to see this slower or faster, or you want to speed through some of this, there's the option below the video um, to go into slow motion, fast motion, or you can just fast forward through parts if you already understand the general concept. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this fourth round for the size medium and I'll meet you back here and we'll start working on the sides. Okay, so I finished round four of size medium. We're gonna check our gauge. It should be about six and a half inches across, which it is. So just perfect. If the base should be laying nice and flat, it's fine if this corner is um, flipping up a little tiny bit, that's fine, but it should not look wavy. If it's looking kind of wavy, you most likely need to crochet a little bit tighter. Okay, so on this one, I wanted to show you what it looked like to have the rounded bottom. So instead of working in the back loops only, we're going to work under both loops. If we're working under both loops, we don't need to do that no cut join method. So you just join that last round with a slip stitch just like you did the rest of the rounds and then we are going to single crochet all the way around and we're working under both loops on this one so don't skip that first stitch okay so again it's insert your hook under both loops Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So if you notice, my work is kind of starting to curl in as I work. And that's what we talked about on the last size. I'm working with this kind of inside out now it's going to naturally curl that way. So the work that is facing you as you crochet should be on the outside of your basket. So just kind of curl it away from you and make sure that the outside of the basket is facing you as you work. If it's more comfortable for you to work with it like this and feels more natural, that's fine. But when you're done with the basket, you need to make sure you flip it the right side facing out. So I'm going to keep finishing these rounds. It's just like the size mini. We just keep doing a bunch of single, single crochet rounds under both loops. And we're going to do this until we get a total of 11 rounds. So I'm going to finish doing that and meet you back here when I'm done and we'll work on the handles. Okay, so I've completed round 11 of the size medium. You can see 
how the bottom rounds up. When we're finished with this one, I'll compare it to the small one side by side so you can see. But now we are going to join that final round with a slip stitch and start working on that handle. So this one, let me look at my notes. We're gonna chain eight for the handle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and then we skip eight. Remember to count that first stitch, the one that we just chained out of, as the first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So find that ninth stitch and single crochet. We're gonna single crochet 12. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, now we are going to match the handle from the first side. So we're going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then skip eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then 12 more single crochet along that last side. So that's one, two, three. Again, for single crochet, you insert your hook, yarn over, pull up loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. That's five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And we ended in the last stitch, which that means we know we did it correct again. The handles will be kind of pushing in. That's fine, that's what it should look like. Okay, so we did eight chains here. So we're gonna do nine single crochet into that chain space. Again, on this round, we do not join. We just go right into that second round or that next round. Again, you can kind of adjust as you go. That's one. Two, three, four. When I'm doing this, I try to get the two strands as smooth as I can and untwisted. That makes it nice and neat right here. So if it's starting to twist, just kind of even it out the best you can, smooth it out. So that was four, five, Six, let's try that one again, seven, eight, and nine. And then just kind of smooth it out. Make sure that you don't need an extra stitch in there. That one looks good. Okay, and then we're gonna kind of loosely slip stitch around the side. So don't forget the very first one, you should have 12 until you get to the next handle. So one, two, three. Again, I kind of pull up evenly to the loop that's already on the hook 
before I pull it through. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, now we're going to start that next handle. I'm trying to kind of smush it down to fit it in the frame for you guys. Okay, and then single crochet in that chain space. Again, we're doing nine total. One, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, and nine. nice and neat. Okay, and then we just finish slip stitching in those last 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, then we leave a little bit of a tail, fasten off, and then pull that tail through. Let me show you how I finish that off one more time. Okay, so I find that next stitch, the single, the first single crochet of the handle, working from front to back, I insert my needle under both loops and then just kind of finish it off like that. And then just finish weaving the end off inside until it's like nice and tight and secure. And then we can just kind of shape the basket. This one, since it's rounded, it doesn't need to be shaped around the bottom as much, but just kind of shape the handle. It's important when you do this first slip stitch next to the handle that you don't do it very tight because then it will really pull it under like that. You want to make it loose and then kind of twist your handle to where it's nice and straight. And then you could put that Pyrex bowl in if you want. Sometimes I put two in to make it higher, or if you have another bowl that will help shape it a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. And there is size medium rounded. Let me compare it to the non-rounded version. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But this one, because it has that ridge from working the back loop only, sits a little bit flatter, where this one's just rounded. So I think they're both very cute. So you can choose whichever one you like better. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up for the tray. You'll want to complete rounds one through four of the size medium um, for the base of the tray. And then we'll do a few more rounds of the base before we start the sides. So I'll meet you back here in a minute. Okay, so we're on to the tray. And we did the first four rounds, which is the same 
as the first four rounds on the size medium, the same as the first three rounds on the size mini. So each round we're just building um, 10 extra stitches. So there was 10, 20, 30, 40. On the tray, we're going up to 70 stitches, so we'll have 70 rounds. Each round we increase 10 stitches. So you can keep going to make the biggest basket you want, just increase um, by 10 stitches each round. So again, if you have my original tray pattern, I started with nine stitches, but I wanted to make this a little more cohesive so that each size was based on an increase of 10. So I switched this to um, the base having seven rounds for a total of 70 stitches. So there you have it. So round five, we are going to half double crochet in the first three stitches and then two half double crochet in the fourth stitch. So I join the round, chain one, half double crochet in that first stitch, half double crochet in the second, half double crochet in the third, and then two half double crochet in the fourth. This color is Fisherman, by the way. Okay, so half double crochet in the next three stitches. And then two in the next. Okay, again, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up loop, yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up loop, yarn over, pull through three. And then two in the next stitch. So repeat that all the way around for a total of 50 stitches and I'll meet you back here for the next round. Okay, we just finished 50. That's one, two, three, four, five rounds. Joining with a slip stitch again to that first half double crochet. Tighten that working yarn on your hook just a little bit. Complete the slip stitch. Again, your piece should be laying pretty flat. It's okay if the last round curls up just a little bit, but it shouldn't be very wavy. So this one, we are going to do a half double crochet in the first four stitches, and then two half double crochet in the next stitch. So if you notice, this is a very basic increase pattern. The first round is two half double crochet in each stitch. The next round, is, or sorry, the first round is just the 10 half double crochet. The second round is two half double crochet in the first, or in each stitch. And then you change to one half double crochet and then two in the next stitch. And then you do two half double crochet and then two in the next stitch and then three and then two in the next stitch. So you just keep building. So this one is gonna be four half double crochet before we do the two in the next stitch, which is the increase. And you just keep building that way. And that's how you can easily make this to any size. So after round seven, if you wanted to keep going, you just keep adding one extra stitch before you add the increase. And the increase is where you add the two half double crochet in the same stitch. Okay, so this one is round six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's four half double crochet. So again, we joined, chained one, and then work four half double crochet in the next four stitches. And then two, in that next stitch. Okay, so four in the next four stitches, or one in the next four stitches for a total of four. And then in that fifth stitch, 
two half double crochet. So we're gonna repeat that all the way around for a total of 60 stitches. I will meet you back here for round seven. Okay, round six is done. We have a total of 60 stitches. Again, join to that first half double crochet with a slip stitch. And then on this round, we are going to half double crochet in the first five stitches and then two half double crochet in that sixth or the next stitch. So chain one. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And then we do our increase. So two in that sixth stitch. Okay, and then repeat that around. So one, two, three, four, five, and then that increase. So two in the next stitch. So just repeat that same pattern all the way around for a total of 70 stitches, and then we will start the sides of our tray. I'll meet you back here in a minute. Okay, round seven is complete. It should still be laying nice and flat. We should have about 10 and a half to 11 inches across, which we do, so we are good to go. So on the tray, I recommend doing the method where you work under the back loop only. The tray only has a few rounds on the side and I feel like it takes a few rounds for the rounded version to start coming together. So I just personally think the flatter version looks better on the tray. So we pull that loop up a little bit and we're gonna do that no cut join method. So you find both loops um, from the first stitch of the round, from the back to the front, you insert your hook under all those loops, put that little loop through, pull it to the back. Make mine a little bit bigger. Okay, and then again, you want to make this loop right here about the same size as the other ones. So once you have that, just pull it kind of tight on your hook, and then we're gonna chain one and single crochet in the back loops only. So again, we find the back loop. So this would be the front, this would be the back. And then just single crochet all the way around just like we did on the other sizes. So I'm gonna finish this round and meet you back here for the next. Okay, so I finished that round of single crochet in the back loop only. Again, we're gonna join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch. You can see where that nice invisible seam was created. Now we are going to do two rounds of single crochet so chain one, working in that very first stitch, just single crochet all the way around for a total of 70 stitches. And then we're gonna repeat that one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete those next two rounds and meet you back when we start the handles. Okay, so we finished that last round of the basket. And we have this really nice tray starting. So I'm gonna show you the handle quickly. So for the tray, we are going to chain 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Then we skip 12, so remember, the very first stitch counts as the first skipped stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So in the thirteenth stitch, you single crochet, 
and then we single crochet 22 more times for a total of 23 single crochet before getting to that next handle. And then you just repeat that process along. So after the 23, you do 12 more chains and then 23 more stitches, just like we've done on the other sizes. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete that round and meet you back here for that finishing round. Okay, so we have that round of handles complete. Like on the rest, it's normal for them to be a little misshapen and kind of inward at this point. So we are going to do 13 single crochet in the handle space, the chain space, one, two, three, four, five. Like I said, kind of adjust as you go, make sure it's not tangled. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 and 13. So just kind of make sure you don't need any more in there and then slip stitch around just like the other baskets. So once you get back to the second handle, again, do 13 single crochet in the chain space and then finish slip stitching around. So I'll go ahead and finish that and meet you back here for the join. Okay, so we finished that. So we're gonna fasten off, leave a tail long enough to weave in, pull the tail through, and then Again, find that first single crochet of the handle. Just insert your needle from the front to the back and finish it off just like that. So there you have the tray size. Just adjust it, adjust the handles. I'll put photos up here so you can see a little bit better because this one's kind of big for the camera. But we have the tray and then the size medium with the rounded bottom and then the mini size. So there you have it. Again, the pattern link to my blog will be in the caption below along with um, links where you can purchase the supplies. In two more weeks, the color block basket will be the next pattern. It is a very similar technique but we're going to switch colors and it uses the same yarn so um, I look forward to working on that one with you in a few weeks and if you have any questions or comments let me know below and I hope you guys have a good day talk to you soon